Hey guys, and welcome to Smells Like Teen Angst. I'm Sarah, and welcome back for episode seven, If Dogs Could Talk, of our know, I Know What You Did Last Summer discussion show. Let's do it. <laughs> Whoop, whoop. Today, hi. hi, you will notice it is me and Kiki today. Jordan had some personal things to attend to, but we couldn't let you down. So real quick before we begin, as always, Kiki, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kiki. I'm always here. Today I'm channeling my Winifred Sanderson. And let's it. talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, Halloween is not over. I refuse. Uh, anywho, so this week... Episode seven, if dogs could talk, when they said it, I was like, oh, they said it. Um, we got the flashback of Clara covering Lennon with the sacred nectar, aka all of the honey, which Kiki, you called at one point. I know. <laughs> um, I mean, we, yeah. I'm just trying to say, I was right. <laughs> You're like, I called all this show. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> We saw her putting the ice spiders into her ear. We saw Lennon cutting herself. We saw um, the biggest thing, I think, from the flashback was Lennon ran towards the car. She didn't try to avoid it. She saw it coming and she killed herself, really, is what like the big mystery turns out to be that no one will ever know. I didn't think that was coming. Kiki, did you see that coming? Um, I didn't think that was coming. And hopefully there's another flashback that shows her like waving her arms maybe and running towards. But what, what they gave us, it definitely looks like she intentionally ran towards a car. Yeah. And no one saw coming. I was like, oh, so that's where we're going with this. Okay. I will say what I love about this show is it does constantly surprise me. As soon as I think I do have it fully figured out, something like that happens. And I'm like, this is why I love it. This is why I love it so much. And they kept the surprises coming this week. Mm -hmm. And I'm all here for it. I was expecting another kill that was definitely going to lead us towards who done it. But you know, we didn't get what I wanted. So let's just get into it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Margo has like, you know, is it Charlie Day that like string board of like who done it mystery in the back? Yes, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Like, she's like, but it's Dylan or it's this person or it could be that. Um, and I do love that the town has its own like kill the beast moment where everyone's like, we're going after Clara. We've wanted to do this for a long time. Led by suspect number one, daddy. Okay. So I know he's still still super sus um mm -hmm. allison gets a call from her mom and like figures out that her mom has this whole other family including another child which is really really brutal knowing like she left two teenagers and we still don't really understand why she left i mean honestly be probably because cult daddy wouldn't leave the cult or something or wanted to wanted different things or want to stay on the island with the cult and she was like, nah, they're going to come after us, bro. We got to get out. And he's <laughs> like, now nah, you leave. And then she's like, cool. Tell the kids I was dead. I don't know. <laughs> You're supposed to be dead. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought a really gory moment of this episode was when the police officer finds Riley hanging, miss it. well, I don't know if she's hanging, but she's like standing like a statue, missing an arm, fully covered in the honey. And then we see Clara, who is dead. And I, I wasn't sure if she was covered in honey or just wet. And so, like, Dylan obviously just, like, took her out. Okay, here's the thing. That whole scene, I don't consider it gory. I actually thought that the way she positioned Riley was quite beautiful. Mm. And there might have been a story there. Um, I don't know what it is. I was trying to look up, like, any type of deities that may like have be, been placed in that position but I couldn't find anything um and Clara they didn't they said she was dead 
but like homegirl just looked like covered in water and like in a corner. So I'm like, did she drown or did she snitch on somebody? Like, is she alive and she snitched on somebody? I don't know. I mean, Dylan like shows up at her house and is like, um, at Margot's house, is like, it's over. So yeah. I feel like that's like a confession of him maybe Murdered. drowning her, murdered her, drowned her. Knocking her out and waiting for the water to wash in and something. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But I, I, I agree with you that I do think that was, it, I thought it was beautiful and gory at the same time. Beautiful is mm-hmm. a really great word because it like the way she was positioned. Like, do you think Dylan did that to her? Or do you think that's what Clara did and then Dylan took her out? <laughs> well, here's the thing. Like, we don't know at all. When Clara walked into that room, Dylan was not surprised to see her at all. Fair. And I don't, we still don't know the story behind that. And are you going to tell me she dragged Riley's body all the way in, positioned it, did a whole thing, and then Dylan killed her? Like, that doesn't make any sense, which means Dylan has hands in this. I know. And like I've been saying, Dylan, I know. Dylan, what did you do, old Dylan? I, I know just- you did something. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want it to be Dylan because I feel like it's so obvious and then I'll be disappointed in the show that I am loving so far. That's mm. how I feel. Maybe Dylan's a twin. Ooh. I like it. I like where your head's at. Um, so after all of this, we get the memorial for everyone who has been killed by this person. And it kind of for me, I don't know how you felt while watching it, felt like a weirdly anticlimactic ending to the series. But I know we have one more episode and we get these like three weeks later flashes, right? And I just like, I was like, what a weird, weird thing. This episode was just strange in like the way it felt. Like it felt like a finale, but not a finale. You know what I mean? Well, like, I liked that they did that little flash forward because there's always a down point where you think like, oh, we got the killer, it's gone, in like a movie, and then the killer strikes again. So (laughs) it's like, we're still in it, nobody's safe, but people have let their guard down. True. Except for like Margot. I feel like Margot's always on her shit. But (laughs) clearly, Allison slash Lennon let her guard down in this episode, which we'll get to. We're going to get to it. So we get this, yeah. So we get this three weeks later flash. Dad and the chief are official and still having sex in public places. Margo is back from rehab for her mukbanging. Um, and like, and they're just kind of back to their old selves. Like nothing ever happened. And I feel like that's strange, but also makes sense. Like you should, I don't like, you could just go happy go lucky because you think the killer is dead. I don't know. I don't know if I would be so cheerful and open and just like doing carnival games. Um, hey, Dong, no, it's just dead. Let's go party. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, I love that you pointed out, um, because if people don't know, Kiki and I are are roommates and besties. She's in our living room and I'm in the house. Um, Why are you telling all of our secrets? (laughs) Shh, people like to know. Uh, That Margot is wearing the mermaid crown. That if old fans of the old movie, of the original movie, remember Helen Shivers, played by Sarah Michelle Gellar, won it in the pageant and died wearing it when the hook man came for her. So I thought that was a really cool, like little throwback to like the original movie. Cause I feel like it's been a minute since we've had something like that, since we don't have like a character in a cloak, right? We don't have the hook. We mm-hmm. just have like the murder happened in the beginning and then it kind of went on its own. And now we have a nod again to the original film. And I wonder if we are ever going to get a cloaked villain. Cause I feel like that is one thing. That is missing from this series. But didn't we? Oh, with like the hoodie, the hoodie? Exactly. I mean, he was in that hoodie was like in the hoodie first man, episode. Or I know, episode. but hoodie man it could be our person. True. Hoodie man is our cloaked villain. And it's true, we haven't had a lot of callbacks to the movie. So this was nice. Um, I feel like they're kind of dropping the ball in the text message since Dylan threw his phone. And I don't know why that's not sus to anyone because the text message was kind of the link that we had as like the modern version of I Know What You Did Last Summer. So yeah. I'm like, 
no one is reminding anybody of shit, which is weird. Mm-mm. We should get back to that. I, uh, I agree. Um, we have this whole moment that happens with Dylan and Allison, right? Allison Lennon, right? Uh, mm-hmm. He like drives her home in his black truck, which is already super sus because we saw the black truck take down Riley, right? He's not the only one, but he is one with one. They almost kiss, but then he like, she goes home and he pulls his own like Billy Loomis. That's what I will always compare someone climbing in a window. It's either Dawson's Creek or Billy from Scream. <laughs> um, and like, he's like, we're going to not make it PG-13. We're going rated R. And they sleep together. Mm-hmm. And I felt so bad for her in this moment in that Dylan is the boy that she has always been in love with. And she finally gets the moment that she's wanting from the very first episode, right? Uh Uh-huh. But it's not as herself. Yeah. And that was dirty. I feel like she should have told him before they even had sex. But, well, I already spoiled it. Here we go, guys. So. (laughs) (laughs) She tells him after. Lennon confesses to Dylan that she's Allison. Uh, throws in her face that he has said that he loved her and she kind of just expects him to be like cool with it which is beyond me like fucked up crazy like girl what are you on how would someone ever be cool with that this is also a secret she needed to take to her grave oh yeah that like the minute you assumed your sister's life that like you killed yourself you're dead Done. you can't tell anyone Maybe write it on a post-it and put it, you know, in your wallet when you're on your deathbed. But, like, don't just, you can't just be telling people this shit. I know. And it's always during this, like, weird, why do couples do this? Because this happens in real life. What's your deepest, darkest secret? Right? No one actually wants the real answer. I'm just going to put that out there. No one wants it. No one wants it. And, like, mm-hmm. his answer was super lame. And then she goes for the jugular with this confession. And he freaks I, out. And he's like, <laughs> I did things that I never thought I would do. And she's like, what did you do? And he's like, goodbye, and crawls back out the window. Yeah, it's just, like, there's certain questions you should not ask, you know? And that's a question that, like, you don't really need to know unless you're trying to put a ring on somebody. Like, I don't know. Mm-mm. Some things are just creepy. And that was creepy. Um, Speaking of creepy, Margot masturbating to Dylan and Lennon's sex tape. I mean, she got her OnlyFans subscription. She paid for it. <laughs> she can do what she wants. And whatever gets you going. Um, <laughs> I was like, mm. weird, but also That's like, like cool. expected of Margot. We've heavily established that she's obsessed with linen so maybe she's hoping for a thruple (laughs) like i don't know maybe i don't know i wouldn't put it past her she might be open to it but she's in her own world she's got her own issues i feel like with her big social media presence online she's probably not even comfortable with being out um true it's just a lot we know the most about Margot of all people. So it makes me feel like she's going to be the one to survive. I hope so. I actually really like her as much as like a kind of like a shallow, like manipulative, overly jealous character. I find her <laughs> fascinating and entertaining. Yeah. Like she's got layers. And she, yeah. And I feel like even though she is kind of a psychopath, she's a decent friend. She's a great friend. Yeah. Like, she's, she's a, a good friend. She cares. She cares. She, I love her. But speaking of Margot, the hooded, the hoodie black hoodie man, woman, child, we don't know, mm-hmm. throws her through her sliding glass door. Like, obviously, I feel like that was a warning and not necessarily trying to kill her. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, why wouldn't he just, like, finish it? I don't know. And then... This, like, like, like I said, Dylan is still suspect number one for me. Um, it made me feel like maybe Dylan went with the intention to kill her. Like, if this hooded person was Dylan, and then while trying to go through with it and realizing that, like, you know, Allison's not dead and all that, he was just like, "What's the fucking point? Why am I trying to kill her?" 
Yeah. Like maybe uh, it's something like that. Or maybe he heard her bodyguard or maybe, um, you know, something stopped him. We don't know yet. I know. And if it is Dylan, the boy was busy because he was in the cave scratching off Allison's name. And then he went to the chief of police. To like, I guess, confess. Like, when did he do this? He like scratched the name off, went to kill Margot, or went to kill Mar, like push Margot through the ring, scratched the name off, rolled it at the police station. Girl, you know the timeline in this show is weird. Okay, you can't just like assume that it wasn't Dylan. They put things together for us last minute. So I'm not eliminating Dylan as suspect number one. Okay, fair enough. Well, Daddy and Dylan. Daddy is sc- still sus. He's still so sus. Daddy, police officer, sus. Mm-hmm. And um, the big bang of this episode. The mama, mama is back, baby. Yeah, and she's not what I was expecting. When she, she turned around, I was choice. like. She is a big choice. That yeah. was like some. It's an interesting casting choice. Like, she looks like she's lived a hard life, you know? Yeah. She also kind of reminded me of, um, who is the Spanish, like, um, she was on at the same time as Ricky Lake, like, talk show host. Like Sally Jesse Raphael? No. Oh. <laughs> Her name was, like, I don't even know. Okay. It exists, okay? She just reminds me of, like, this Spanish version of Ricky Lake that... My family used to watch when I was a kid. Oh, funny. I thought <laughs> but, she looked a lot like Tracy Ullman, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's another one. That's another one. That's what I was. I thought. And, like, she showed up, and Daddy's like, you're supposed to be dead. And she's like, well, I'm here. She's like, you should have told me my kid was dead. Yeah. So but like, it's no also one- like, girl, you walked out of their lives. Why does it matter? Exactly. I don't think she deserved to know. She walked mm-hmm. away from them. And didn't want them and didn't take them. Unless, you know, to be fair, we are only getting daddy's side of the story. So it's possible that he said no and he, that he was going to keep the kids. Yeah, but that's true. That's the true. way she that's answered the phone, time. I was like, I can't talk to you. You can't call me mom. Like that whole thing makes me feel like she walked away from them and wanted nothing to do with them. Mm-hmm. And then the one thing at the very end that I, I could not tell what she said is like Margot touches Allison on her cut scars, right? On her thighs. And she's like, you have them too, or there are more of them or something like that. And I'm wondering if that is a tell for Margot or not. Yeah. And that was like the whole thing I thought of when she started sleeping with Margot, like, and making out with Margot and all of that. I just feel like sexual tells or sexual tells like you just don't switch up on a person or switch unless you've been with someone else and you haven't talked about it like yeah so it's very notable and when you're that close to someone you notice things on their body hence those scars being different and weird Mm -hmm. um so i think margo might already know that and not care and not care and dylan is just having a hard time with it I mean, to be fair, he, she did sleep with him and then confess something huge. So yeah, I understand his freak out a little bit. <laughs> oh, I totally get it. But like, you know, she should have just been honest from the jump and probably let them know what she was doing. And then like, hey, so I'm this person. I'm going to assume Lennon's life. Y'all call me Lennon, but I'm Allison. If you don't want to kick it with me, don't kick it with me. Yeah. But then we wouldn't have this lovely show. So. We would, exactly. I know we said it from the beginning that like she should have just been honest and said they were driving and she was in the middle of the road and they didn't see her. And it was totally an accident. They would have gotten a slap on the wrist and moved on. No one would have gone to jail. No one would have lost a scholarship. They all would have been fine. And this happens way too often in teen movies. And I don't want any teenagers watching this show or the, these films to make these choices. I hope these are good examples of yeah, what not don't to do. Don't think the law is just going to come down on you like that. Accidents happen, you know? Yeah. Um, people <laughs> people accidentally kill their siblings like more often than you <laughs> fucking think. <laughs> I know. I know it sounds crazy, but I know like two people who like accidentally were present when their sibling passed away. That's crazy. And you know, they could be blamed for it for negligence or something or like whatever but shit happens you know so it's like 
did I intentionally mean to run my sister over? No, no. but she's dead. Like it happened. I don't know, but as you said, we wouldn't have this amazing show. And <laughs> next week is the finale. And I still don't want to feel like I know exactly what's happening. And I'm really hoping that they're going to pull up another surprise. Like they have been. That Dylan's a twin. <laughs> 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 Well, that Dylan's actually their brother. Oh my God. Could you imagine? Sorry. (laughs) That's not the kind of Eskimo brother you want to be. No, definitely not. But you know, I watch a lot of K-dramas. So stuff like this happens. Okay. (laughs) Well, that's all I have for episode seven. Is there anything else that we missed, Kiki, that you want to talk about? Think real hard. It's important. Oh wait, didn't her dad go to the house, the crime scene, or who stopped at uh, Clara's house? Somebody stopped at Clara's house. I wrote that down. I don't remember. To be honest, people comment. Let us know what we forgot because it happens from time to time. I know. I'm really sorry, guys, but I remember someone stopping at Clara's house before they went somewhere, and I was like, "But why?" I remember that. I swear. Because I stopped at the property and it was like for sale or something. Oh, it's okay. Okay, whatever. That's it. We're gonna end That's it there it. then, because oh. we don't remember. And whatever we forgot, let us know in the comments. But I guess until next week, make sure you subscribe to our channel, thumbs up this video, comment everything you thought about this episode, because we love talking to you about it, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any other angsty videos. Bye. Bye.